this is where I belong, this is what I am, I am literal shit. Hello and welcome to House of Bards, the podcast where we talk about role-playing games, the shared narrative uh, method of role-playing in tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons, Traveller, Call of Cthulhu, Pathfinder, I guess, if you like, you're into that sort of thing, you know. My name is Alex. I'm Beth. And today... We have a very special episode of House of Bards lined up for you. We are going to talk about interplayer character relationships. Basically, when you start shipping your PC characters together in the messiness that is love and, and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to say I have extensive experience with this, because I, I feel like... I I feel like that's slightly overbilling myself as an expert, and I'm, I'm certainly not an expert in this. But I mean, you know, it's so so Jer, um and and Marion are, are kind of officially Who are both characters in yeah. my game. Mm-hmm. Jay and Marion are officially uh, an item as of a few weeks ago, basically. Yeah. They they, they had this weird weird love confession. Do we maybe want to, like... Because we've mentioned both of those characters on the podcast before, mm. but I don't think we've ever gone extensively into, like, the characters and, and what they... Like, who they are mm. and their whole deal, mm. really. So, Jay's my character. Um, they're a, you know, half-elf bard. Um, and they're, they're a gender. And I, so it's, it's sort of why everyone... If you've ever wondered why I specifically avoid using pronouns when I talk about... Jay, that is because Jay has decided that that is the pronoun, that that, that is their preferred pronoun. Or, or rather, I decided that would be Jay's preferred pronoun. This is a very dicey situation, and you know, being a writer of a character of a group that you are not, but that's perhaps a topic for another day. But um, yeah, so Jay is just this kind of bard, elfy type person. You know, Jay's a bit, um, Jay's got certain emotional issues I like you know they have difficulty sometimes with love and and feelings and stuff which which Jay did kind of go into slightly of, of why that is but essentially it all has to do with you know aging a lot quicker than the people around you so you kind of because Jay is a half elf brought up by elves right yeah yeah so you know and on top of that you know parental abandonment issues because you know the mother of Jerge is sort of this, um, she's, like, Wanda is the inversion of the kind of gender-inversed version of has a girl in every part, so has essentially a hot elf man in every part, and I've, I think we've explained it on a previous episode, I'm not sure which episode it would be, um, but yeah, that, that, that was like a fun idea. Yeah, but, Wanda is a, a pirate Yeah. who likes to, uh, to shack up with nubile elf boys. It's true. Who she then foists the resultant elf children off on, and uh, depending on exactly who the elf man in question is, that will determine you know exactly how the uh, the child turns out. So one of the resultant effects of this is that Jay has a whole load of half siblings scattered all the way around the uh, Sea of Bells. Mm. And some in the Empire as well, actually. But uh, um, well, yeah. the one in the Empire is in Irving the Valley, which is on the Sea of Bells. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a very cosmopolitan. I city. see. I see. So it's you know, <coughs> but yeah. Um, so you know, but I think Jay, in some ways, is a bit of a wannabe pirate, but isn't like that into the pirate life. Evidently, it's not a pirate's life for Jay. Jay is elected to be a bard and you know tell stories and. You know, that that's how Jay lives, and it gets into various mischief, and eventually this led to Jay being arrested and put in the prison of Plitz Bl- Blinter. Pit Splinter, yeah. Yeah. And so Jay meets Marion. Marion is, like... Um, Becca isn't here, so maybe, like, do you want me to explain Marion? Yeah, yeah, you explain Marion. Right, okay. Um, 
so Marion, as explained to me, is a pirate, like legit a pirate. Both of her parents were pirates. Both of them got killed doing pirate things. And Marion is this um, small time uh, pirate, very, very anti-slavery, which was an issue in a setting that has no explicit slavery. Uh, but we kind of work that in because there's like there's there's not like slavery slavery, but there's another system like that's worked independently that's mm. like basically slavery. Yeah. Like there there are a couple of different um, conditions on it and like why it comes about and stuff. But I imagine that if you're one of the slaves in question, it's probably not that big a deal to you what the particulars are. Yeah, yeah. Um. So. Marion has this weird um, set of issues with, like, her lineage as a pirate. Um, like, she has a lot of... Well, I'll say a lot of... She, she has a number of, of, like, items of heritage from her parents. And see, she sometimes interacts with her parents' old crew in as much as she murdered the leader. <laughs> um, but she got into the prison of Pit Splinter by um, attacking the Morfang clan in Varash who control all fishing so she's really i I say probably like closer to a um a buccaneer or a corsair yeah in that well i suppose she's not really hired by any one state but the things that she does are piracy on the high seas not really because she has any strong criminal conviction but because she's like willing to fuck up other people's shit in pursuit of like freedom and uh and justice (laughs) yeah so um you could maybe call her some kind of terrorist, maybe? <laughs> that's not a bad way to describe her. I also don't think it's that's... maybe a bit of a strong word, no. but it's, it's a kind of thing. Yeah, it's not entirely an inaccurate description of Jay sometimes either. Like, politically, yeah. they're quite similar in the... Well, <laughs> you know... They are actually, you know, generally pretty similar. So, um, I think of the four player characters, like, Marion has maybe the least baggage that comes to the top but Mm. that kind of like works out well because marion just sort of seems a lot of the time to get elected de facto leader it's true yeah it's her (laughs) boat that they're all like shipping around on and just it seems to be that even though technically balasar the uh, the dragonborn seems to be ostensibly the most sensible member of the party he doesn't really like to take leadership roles all that often so marion gets thrust into the like that position when they need some kind of definitive decision on something mm. she's you know marion is our commander shepherd you know yeah. she's the one who when <laughs> whenever we have a tough moral choice it's always like let's go back to the boat and talk about this marion what do you think what's your decision and uh yeah yeah, yeah. exactly and uh so um for quite a while now um Jay and Marion have been, you know, uh, friendly. Yeah, well, yeah, but you know, will they? Won't they? You yeah, know, like the... I think it, it, it kind of didn't. It kind of just start that like they would end up teaming up a lot of the time when the party split up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there was one session where we had just survived barely Galliana, and we kind of had this little exchange, and Jay was like, and I just went. Uh, don't you go dying on me now. And then Becca went, yeah, you either. And there was this kind of beat in this moment, and I forget who it was, but I'm willing to bet it was you, um, who just went, man, I ship it. And it, like, then it was like, we were coming up with ship names, and it was like, was it... And th- and they, they were kind of like, for a bit, we all talked about, like, what a, what a kind of cute couple they'd make, and I was like, yeah, they'd really be the ultimate couple. And then I think that was everyone basically in agreement with, like, so... Th- this is something that works then, right? This is this is a ship. Okay. It had kind of started happening already in yeah. that, like, um, the two are very, very good friends. Yeah. And, like, Jay is Marion's first mate mm. because the original first mate of the ship became unavailable. Yes. And I, I think, like, um, it's interesting to see, like, the, the relationships between different members of the party because um, it's like... You have um, Silas, right? Yeah. And Silas is play. Silas is uh, Matt's character, and, and Silas is a sorcerer with a level in Paladin, except it's Paladin of the Goddess of Chaos. 
which yeah. we had to do a bit of a bit of work to to actually like get to make sense. And like there was one session where this was fairly late on just before um the point where you know, J Jay and Marion um you know actually made themselves an official thing where you were all like in a bubble in in Lehman's tiny hut yeah in the middle of a snowbound like path mm. escaping from like basically being routed yeah and it was just you and Matt in that session yeah so it was like Marion and Balasar were were asleep mm. and Jay and Silas who are probably the two silliest <laughs> characters yeah. <laughs> in the party like Silas especially and then Jay is like not always the most serious no yeah I think Jay definitely can egg on Silas sometimes and I think Silas can egg on Jay a lot of the time as well they're both yeah. quite silly and they're up for doing quite deft things occasionally the, um, uh, the comparison to Amethyst and Steven Universe uh, for Silas and Jay respectively I think is quite apt Yeah. Um, so I was really hoping that there would be like this more extensive conversation between the two of them because obviously they'll be kind of like comfortable talking to each other about an incident that had occurred before. Do you want to talk about the incident that they talked about? Because I vaguely remember. Ah, uh, yes. So we were fighting a vampire, and I think kind of one of the running jokes from a few weeks back um, was that Marion always gets charmed by uh, hot monster ladies, essentially. Like, basically anything. That yeah. has the charm ability <laughs> is going to attempt to charm one of the members of the party and it's going to be Marion. Yeah, yeah. And Marion will may always subsequently attempt to charm other people, but it's always going to be Marion first. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. quite often I just roll the dice and it's just always Marion. It's always Marion. And the thing is, like, I, I believe very much earlier than this one thing I'm talking about, um, she got charmed by a uh shit, what do you call them? It'll come to me. What are they? The tree ladies. I can't believe. Oh, I f- a dryad. Dryads. Thank you. I can't believe I forgot that. Anyway, the dryads, and that that was a thing that happened. And then, like, I believe Marion failed her charisma check, and then Becca just like deadpanned. Yeah, Marion's super gay anyway, so this kind of fits. Um, um, we we had a bit of a laugh, but anyway, fast forward to um. I remember, like, even at the dryad incident, which was inside the uh, ether cube of Zetiendite. Yeah. Like. Jay was super jealous. Oh yeah, no, Jay was like, yeah, no, this, this, you, you know, you can't, you can't have this pirate girl, like any other pirate girl, fine, but specifically this pirate girl is not for, like... And I think we, we like, made the joke, didn't we, about how, um, like, every time this a, a new hot monster lady turns up, it's like, Jay, Jay does the I'm watching you thing. <laughs> yeah. But, but Jay is a wear spider, so they use like <laughs> all eight fingers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so fast forward, and we have this hot vampire orc lady. Um, yeah, the vampire orc lady was not one of my best characters. Like, I had the idea for like what I wanted her thing to be, but I couldn't quite get the character voice down. So what you ended up with was this character who is the damages accountant for <laughs> the um. For, for the controlling like mafia like clan yeah who control like the, the morfang yeah who is weirdly sexually excited by the idea of murdering the person who is like producing most of her workload uh, yeah yeah <laughs> it was it was like I, I had the character motivation down but the character voice wasn't coming to me and yeah. it was kind of embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> anywhere so that vampire lady charmed Marion, and Marion was just making repeat it, like, like, look, I've said it once, I'll say it again, but Becca is really bad at rolling dice, okay? Like, yeah. like Becca, I love you, but, like, I don't know where your dice are from, but they're obviously cursed. Um, she, like, she consistently fails, like, a bit basic, like, dexterity checks, and it's like, you're the rogue, why is this happening? Um... I love how like she's the dedicated rogue, yeah. and is worse at climbing walls than Jay. I know. Well, like even I, before Jay the, became a wear spider yeah. and got like um, uh, wall climbing like at will. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe there were several situations even before then where like 
Jay had to like either encourage Marion or help Marion physically up to something to climb or whatever. I just ah oh, man, those dice, they're cursed, Becca. Get them checked out. Get them. I, I don't know, like some kind of like just get them seen too. Get the evil spirit removed from them, please. We're begging you. Um, anywhere. <laughs> um, so, anywhere. So, Marion is, you know, consistently failing all her charisma checks. So, Jay casts Counter Charm, and I'm like, wouldn't it be funny if the way Wouldn't that- it be funny if is kind of like the <laughs> hold my beer of uh, role playing? <laughs> Because as soon as you say, wouldn't it be funny if you know the thing in question is happening? <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if the way that Jay cast Counter Charm was if it involved a big dipping romantic kiss, right? Now, I'm pretty sure that Counter Charm, like in Raw, mm. has to involve sound. Yeah. But what you've got to understand is that me as a DM. Like, I'm like, I, I want to see this ship happen as much as anybody at the table. Yeah. So, as far as I'm concerned, yes, that absolutely would be an interfering influence to, like, the charm of, of another being. Yeah. So anyway, Jay does that. Well, Jay, Jay asks permission first, because Jay's nothing if but a gentle elf. You know, like, Jay believes strongly in uh, consent and, and stuff like that. Jay's Jay's a good person, not a scumbag. Um, anyway, so, so, so Jay kisses I mean, like, the Marion. The main issue is that like the charm ability is already a pretty flagrant violation of consent. I mean, yeah, it with. is, isn't it? Yeah. So, so Counter Charm is like, hey, no. let's get some consent in here. Yeah. Anyway, so... Jay kisses Marion, okay. No, that's not the funny bit. What is the funny bit is immediately afterwards, like, not even really an entire turn order afterwards or anything like that. Balasar just, like, completely kills the vampire lady. Like, the vampire lady. Like, that dead. vampire lady got killed by um, the shooting holes in the roof of the oh, building yeah. she no, was yeah, in, yeah. just so that she would get, like, sunlighted to death. Yeah, so, essentially, what you got here is Jay kind of kissed Marion for like no real reason did like a big gooey romantic kiss I imagine if it was like a TV show like romantic music would swell it would be in like slow-mo and, like, and the then s- like halfway through the ro- romantic music we just hard cut to <laughs> Balasar slicing off the uh, the vampire lady's head with an axe Yeah. and then like both Jay and Marion open their eyes like still completely lit locked <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're like mm. yeah I think, I don't remember if I said this or anything like that, but, like, I think Jay then just completely dropped Marion and, like, just, like, moved, like, 50 feet away. I don't remember if that happened or not. I don't remember But that, that's how I remember. I don't think that happened, though. So, anyway, fast forward a bit to, you well, know... Like, come out of the flashback. Yeah. Back to Liaman's tiny hut where Silas and Jay are having a chat. Mm-hmm. I was kind of hoping for them to have more of a chat than this, but honestly... They drew a penis on Balasar's face, and that was about the extent of their hijinks together. <laughs> yeah. There's not really much you can do in Liaman's tiny hut. I mean, it's not like it's it's not like any of the other spells that instantaneously create somewhere for you to live. You know, it's not like a mansion or anything, you know, like I feel like if Jay had like a magic mansion, maybe there'd be like a pool room and like a sauna, place to play, um well, like, snooker and stuff. They, there would have to be a giant bath. Obviously, yeah. Because the running joke is that all of you get into a bath together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I definitely think... Anyway, so, you know, Silas and Jay just having a chant Lehman's tiny hut, drawing dicks on Balasar's face, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure he still has drawn on him days he later. Had, I don't remember if he had an opportunity to wipe it off. No, I don't think he has. <laughs> Anyways. And, like, nobody's going to challenge him on it because Balasar is fucking huge. I know, it's like, shit. <laughs> Honestly, it's the perfect person to draw a penis on their face of because, like, even Balasar with a dick on his face, it doesn't particularly, like, damage his authority. If, if anything, if anything, Balasar with a dick on his face <laughs> increases it, right? Because 
but because like you look at him and it's like man if this guy's crazy enough to walk around like that i don't want to fuck with him this man's got a dick like drawn right on his face and he ain't even that bothered he must be really like do not fuck with this giant six foot buff dragon don't do it mm. but anyway enough about how stacked balasar is <laughs> um so yeah, Silas eventually brings up this topic of, hey, um, that counter charm you used with the vampire lady on uh, Marion, that was, uh, that, that sure was something. Mm-hmm. And just just like, I have to go to sleep now because of the narcolepsy I suddenly have. And just like, flumps down on the ground and pretends to be asleep so they can avoid this conversation. And Silas is like, oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then goes to pray to Vesasark. Yeah. So, yeah. And, like, honestly, that was kind of it for a while. For, for like, over Marion and Jay interactions was, like, the counter charm kiss. And then, eventually, I'm like, honestly, we're running out of episodes to do for the podcast. I should probably move this romance along. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I tried to help by, yeah. like, giving you guys basically a, a downtime episode yeah. of the game where like you you were all thrown out of like you're you're basically on the run from yeah. the law but the law is going to take a while to get there and you just sort of like go back to the ship mm-hmm. and you stay there for a bit yeah until you hear of news of what's happened to the members of the uh, the resistance who were routed in the uh well, you folks at home have seen video games right and films and whatever like anytime you get a base where you just like do hub missions from, you know in the third act that base gets discovered and routed. If you've ever played Wolfenstein New Order, I think that's the game that I played most recently where that happens, but it's a really, really common trope and it just kind of drags the pot along. So I was yeah. like, okay. Technically that, that happens in Act 1 of Inquisition. But it, it does happen in Origins. Your base gets raided, but I guess since technically in Origins, the camp moves around all the time. Mm. Technically it happens to the whole city of Kirkwall in both Act 2 and in Act 3. Man, Kirkwall's a shit all. Anyway, so, yeah. So there was this, you know, session, and, and we were all there, and we were all present, I think. Yeah, we were all there, right? Or was Matt not there? I can't remember. Matt, Matt wasn't there. Matt wasn't there. Anyway, so we're at the bar, and then we're like, let's get drunk. And everyone's like, yeah, that's a great idea. So like Jay everyone. drinks an entire bottle of vodka. Silas uh, didn't, even though the effect that he got where he can't get drunk had worn off by this point (laughs) but it was like he matt wasn't there so i was just like having silas do the last thing that matt told me he did yeah Mm. Uh, but everybody else was like uh, all of you were knocking back yeah something yeah shut 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 wasn't wasn't jay just like drinking straight vodka (laughs) jay was drinking straight vodka and i think like balasar was drinking beer but a fuck ton of it yeah anyway so I forget what Marion and Jay were talking about that made Jay run into the bathroom all of a sudden. I forget also. I forget also, yeah. Um, but presumably it was about like feelings and romance and like the confrontation of those feelings, which is something that Jay struggles with because Jay can't deal with that. So Jay runs into the bathroom um, and hides there and then like physically tries to shove themselves down into the toilet. And saying, and I'm pretty sure Jay said, this is where I belong, this is what I am, I am literal shit. I don't even, re- like, really remember, but it would these, you know, these feelings of, like, no, 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 don't want to deal with this right now, I'm garbage. And, um, then Marion comes to the bathroom door and is like, do you want to talk? Should I come in? And Jay's like, no, we'll talk through the door, because I kind of don't, I don't want to. D- don't come in. You can't see me like this. And <laughs> then Marion comes in. You can't see me like this, literally standing <laughs> in the lavatory. Not in the lavatory cubicle, in the lavatory. Mm. So then Marion comes in anywhere and is like, let me help you out the toilet, <laughs> right? <laughs> so Jay's helped out. And then they have a discussion about feelings of, you know, like, like, like Jay's like, look, you know... When I was, you know, starting to have feelings for people and stuff like that, you know, the people who I'd grown up with, they, you know, they were, you know, they were all, you know, you know, basically everyone who was in 
everyone who's my age is still a kid, basically, so it was really weird for me. And, and everyone who was age-appropriate looking was actually really, like, hundreds of years old, and it, it, that was very wow, difficult for like me. like, maybe 180? Well, yeah, yeah. 150, yeah. even? Yeah, you know. That kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like, that was really... Because, you know, like, even though you were... Um, in love with someone, technically that they were way older than you, they had way more experience, you know, and it was it was really awkward and stuff, and yeah, so you know, Jay J was dealing with some things, and also like it has not went unnoticed to Jay that like you know Marion is a pirate and Jay's mum is a pirate, and like really deep down, all Jay ever wanted to be was a pirate. And the only reason why Jay hasn't became a pirate is because like abandonment issues, and also like you know. Where would they go? Who would have them? You know, very, very complicated emotional shit here going on. Yeah, and there's like there's stuff where obviously Jay can sort of conceive of the idea of a place for them like outside the Bell Elven society because yeah. that's where Wanda is from and they have a whole load of half siblings who are from there, but they weren't really able to like understand how that might work because there was no real practical demonstration until yeah. now. Yeah. So, yeah, and, like, it's not when I noticed that, like, oh, the girl alike is a pirate, but also the mother who abandoned me is a pirate. There's obviously maybe some issues there, question mark. So, the, you know, that those were things that Jay was going through, too. And other than that, Jay's just basically a fucking hot mess embarrassment of a human elf being. Like, like look, Jay, Jay straight up cannot deal with emotions. Like, you think... Like, Fenris in Dragon Age 2 was bad, where he just broke up with you for three years. No, J- Jay's gotta be just probably worse than that, right? Like, you started to romance... Like, in a video game, if, if Jay was a romanceable Bioware companion, right? The romance would start off where, like, you confess your feelings, and then, like, you have, like, a little bit of a smooch, and then Jay's like, I have to go now, bye. And they don't show up again until Act 3, at the very last minute when... The evil is about to destroy everyone. It's like, right, okay, I'm back. I've thought about it, and I definitely love you. And you're like, what the shit, Jay? What the shit? Literally, the great evil is going to destroy the village right now. And this, you don't... I love you, you too, but this is really not the time. Yeah, I love you too, but this is really not the fucking time and place. And Jay's like, yeah, but, you know, love and stuff. And you're like, I mean... what the fuck, Jay? What the fuck? I could sing a little song if that would help. <laughs> no, it, it, fuck, it, it fucking won't help at all. Just like your fucking Battle of the Bands loyalty mission didn't help. What the shit was that, Jay? <laughs> Who would the Battle of the Bands loyalty mission be against? <laughs> um, the Dark, like, po- sp- the dark Spawn, obviously, right? Oh, right? Either the Dark Spawn or, if we're talking Mass Effect, Batarians. I feel like Mass Effect like actually has bar- like has bands that that Jay could be battling against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially on, like, Omega and whatever. Yeah. I feel like there's bands there. Oh, man, Omega Battle of the Bands would be fucking sweet. Can you imagine? Yeah. Ah, like, Arya Talok is, like, a judge and she's, like, Simon Cowell in it. Mm. And, like, whichever band needs your help, like, Shepard gets conscripted to be a drummer. Yeah. Just because Shepard... Literally has absolutely no idea what is going on at every, any given point in their life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you come across a band and that is still happening to you, you can basically only be a drummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I will say this, being a drummer is very difficult. Having actually went mm. to a rock concert quite recently, being a drummer is very difficult. Um, and if you are talented enough to do, like, a drum solo, like, props to you, obviously, but, like... Yeah, I'm being facetious. I yeah. have actually like heard yeah. um, drummers explain how it's done and like yeah. how to do it's... it like really high level is it's actually not, not yeah. only very like technically difficult but also very physically strenuous. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, um, so so that that was a thing. So I th- I think that would be I that would be a great Mass Effect mission. I think. Ma- come on, Mass Effect Andromeda. I think that would save that game, Alex. I mean, is if Smuggler. Shepard XP has to like do a battle of the bands. I mean, I think what would save Mass Effect Andromeda is if they got rid of Casey Hudson as project lead, but what do I know? I think they have, haven't they? No, no, pretty sure he's still they on board. Haven't? Uh, yeah. Well, so, you know, Jen and Marion had like their big love, 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 love confession, you know, I love you, I love you too. And then Jay was like, 
will you take over the elven empire with me and be my queen? And, and you know, Marion was like, cool, I guess. Meanwhile, Jay is trying to think of a gender neutral term for emperor. Um, I, I, I feel like um, Jay will probably just go with elf prime if they can't find one. Imperator, unless that means something else. Yeah. I don't know, I, I quite like, um, I like elf prime. How would you feel about Elf Prime or I mean, uh, <laughs> Elf Supreme? I feel it might be questionable given that Jay is like half Elf. Yeah, half Elf Supreme. That doesn't sound as cool though. A bard Supreme. No, I'll keep working on it. Anyway, so, you know, and then, you know, then they went off and uh, got the boat rocking basically while uh, Bal dealt with some shit and Matt dealt with some shit. Well, I'm pretty... that, that didn't, like, Silas didn't really deal with some shit at all. He was just continually dealing with shit from start to finish. Yeah, 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 that's true. The same shit all the time. Whereas yeah. Balasar is being hunted by slavers mm. who he betrayed. Yeah, and then, you know, pre, um, pre-bang, pre no, post-bang, not pre-bang, post-bang, you know, Jay basically turned into a giant douche canoe. So that's the thing. Wait, what? Well, you know, like... J- Jay was like, I don't know. I feel, I feel like, af- like after the the banging, Jay, Jay was like a, a bit, a, a bit of a jackass more than they normally are. Definitely making more jokes and cracking more things, and was like, let's ha- let's have a battle of the bands. And everyone was like, Jay, why? And you were like, you know, Is you this want to. Jay being an ass to litter. Yes, Jay being an ass to litter. Because litter's like dressed up in fluffy clothes and yeah. basically spherical because it's really cold. Yeah. And then Lydia's like, oh, looks like somebody got laid. <laughs> and yeah. Jay's like, you want to fucking go? Because <laughs> sure as shit, I got laid. Yeah. <laughs> ah. um, so yeah, that, that's definitely thing. thing. But it was this sort of, at first it was this sort of very natural realisation that these two characters would make a good couple. And then you kind of have the awkward plottingness of like, how do we get these two characters to move from like friendship and flirting to like smooching and romance. Mm. I think this is really the point where we start talking about the actual subject at hand. Yeah. So for so- for something like this to happen, you have to have both players be pretty invested in role playing their characters. Mm. Cuz otherwise it's people not- might want it to happen for an entirely different reason and they'll be constantly making it weird. And yeah. if you're a DM and you identify that one of them wants them to do that for that reason, then Maybe you should talk to one of those players and possibly you need to make some rules about boundaries and Mm. shit because that's not good. Yeah. But if it's two players who want their characters to enter into a relationship because they feel that that is what those characters would do or should do, Mm -hmm. that's cool. And it's fun to roleplay that stuff. Yeah, it is. And it can be quite sweet and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, uh, because you're not really like having a relationship. It's more that you're simulating a relationship. So you do have to think about stuff like, you know, how fast would they take it? And you have to like keep track of the fact that obviously you think about it a lot as a player. Yeah. But game time always moves slower than real time. Mm. So maybe it's not appropriate for these characters to have like a really good and stable relationship based on like long-term communication and taking things slowly if they've known each other for like a week 12 hours yeah couple like of it's, minutes <laughs> it's it's that kind of a thing isn't it like um anyone who's ever done free form up here i used to do a lot but you you sit there with your friend that's right fuckers this has become a free form up podcast <laughs> <laughs> i bait and switched you all and here is beth to be the payload <laughs> so <laughs> go on <laughs> So me and my friend um, used to do quite a lot of this sort of stuff, and like we were like some of them, like one in particular, we spent like actually a realistic amount of time for like how long does it actually take to develop feelings for someone? How long does it actually take to get over yourself and confess those feelings? And how long does it then take for you to work your way up to a romantic relationship out of that and become a stable relationship and it took literally forever they were like i think by the time they actually like i love you and i love you they were like 600 pages of this shit so like over six thousand posts 
and I think we'd been RPing at that point for at least six months. And in game, I think only about two or three months had actually passed. And that was with time skips as well. It was like, right, a week has passed, or we don't need to do the we don't need to do the whole like school week, so let's just skip to the weekend. And we don't really need to talk about this bit, so let's skip ahead to this bit. All that complicated shit. Like, seriously. It was a pain in the ass. Because, like, literally every other one, it would be like, yeah, well, within five minutes of meeting each other, they're like, I love you, I love you too, let's have sex in the cupboard. And that's just not... I mean, that is what some people do, and it's fine if you do that, but, you know, I'm just saying, a stable romantic relationship out of that, maybe not always a thing, maybe a bit less likely. Or not, what do I know of love? I am just a simple country girl from the rough northern streets, where it's cold. And sometimes... A little bit chilly. I can confirm none of the things that Beth just said aside from the <laughs> fact that it is cold in the north. <laughs> it's really I, I live there sometimes and, and it is it is cold. It's cold. Less far north than where Beth lives, but given it's cold where I live, and I have also lived in the south a bit, I would determine that the further north you go, the colder it is. So she is probably not lying about that. Yeah, that's a general rule, I think. For Like, it really confuses me in, like, fantasy worlds where you go up north and it's not cold. Like... Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, about that. Oh, you asshole! <laughs> that doesn't, well, like, I, you know. The thing about um, about like the Dawn Zombie campaign is that it's set in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Okay. So it's like okay, okay. You, know, you go, you go south, and it's it's cold. So like, if you went far enough north, it would become cold. Yeah. But going north from where you are, it's just going to get warmer, more mild. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh. So. Um, on the other end hmm. of the uh, the spectrum of relationships between player characters, I'm going to talk about a character that I played called Millennium Treeheart. Nice. The Treehearts are a legacy <laughs> of characters that I have played. And uh, this story involves my friend Maxie, who I know at some point is going to listen to this podcast and I think I have mentioned before because I remember saying these pretty much these exact words. Maybe I cut that point, I don't know. But so... We were playing the uh, the Keep on the Borderlands, uh, which is sometimes called the Caves of Chaos, because the Caves of Chaos do appear in the Keep on the Borderlands, but honestly what you call that scenario appears to depend on what particular part of the scenario you think is important. But um, the idea is that the, the tree heart, like Millennium Treeheart was a celebrity, like a sort of, like not Baron Munchausen type celebrity, in that like a lot of the things that happened to him are ostensibly true. But certainly, um, you know Flashheart from Blackadder? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, the late great Rick Mail. Yes. Continue. Yeah. Flashheart is such a good character. <laughs> yeah, I love him so but, much. But yeah, um, so basically my first character in that scenario was called Century Treeheart. And Century's whole deal was he was going off to become a, an, an adventurer because he was pissed the fuck off that his famous brother had like so many story is told about him as an adventurer mm -hmm. even though his brother had recently suffered a severe head injury that had uh, put him out of practice and knocked him down to level one mm -hmm. but uh, so Sentry got killed and then Millennium turns up and Vrishka who is uh, Maxi's character the funniest thing about this relationship is that it was established pretty early on Vrishka has no idea who Millennium is she just knows he's famous and this is kind of, like, one of the reasons why I say, like, one of the character archetypes you absolutely have to play is a celebrity. But, like, the shittiest kind of celebrity. Like, play somebody who was on X Factor once. Because <laughs> it's so good, it's so fun to play somebody who, like, has some small amount of um, justification for thinking highly of themselves and then, like, takes it way, way too far. Yeah, yeah. But Vrishka's whole deal is that she's like, I want to fuck this guy. Because <laughs> then I can be like, I slept with a celebrity. Yeah. And she floats this idea, I think, in a room, a locked room full of human flesh. Yeah. Salted human flesh. Yeah. That was weird. <laughs> Especially since it was established that neither of them as elves had any particular issue with eating it. But yeah. like, that was weird to other members of the party. Yeah. So yeah, they start bonking. Yeah. And the, there's no there's no real strings attached to this. It's basically she floats the idea and Millennium is like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. 
Which shows that Millennium is a terrible brother because the whole reason that he turned up was because, like, as soon as he got better, he was like, where the fuck's Century gone? Yeah. Oh no, he could be in danger. My wee bro. Yeah. And so then... he, like, he goes off to, um, to try and find him. They also had a sister named Decade who turned up in a later game and ended the world. <laughs> but uh, that's a story, I think, for another day, for the, uh, the story podcast, mm-hmm. I think, which will eventually happen, probably. Mm-hmm. And, like, this just, this just continues, and it really, really annoyed the other players. <laughs> it was just that, like, Maxi and I were both like, yeah, it'd be funny. Let's yeah. do it. And, uh, but, like, then the joke became that they kept doing it. <laughs> So they would, like, keep finding reasonably um, quiet places and the whole rest of the party would go, Ugh, uh, Not again. Bugger off. Uh, no, eventually it got Millennium killed. Yeah, yeah, no. Because uh, some uh, gnolls, I think it was gnolls, maybe bugbears, but I'm pretty sure it was gnolls, turned up and uh, caught them in their sex dungeon. And then, like, one of the other player characters was an asshole about, like, rescuing them from these horrible gnolls. I mean, yeah. it was in character for him to be an asshole. Yeah, yeah. But it was still kind of a dickish thing to do. Yeah. Um, so he ended up getting his throat cut. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I left off on that family for a bit and uh, played an explicitly gay elf called who's just, like, really mournful and morose, who was, like, um, shield bearer for Millennium. And yeah. has come to find him. Yeah. And um, I played him through to the end of the, the campaign, and then I was like, nah, he's going home. Yeah. He doesn't want anything more to do with these people. He's still really depressed. Yeah. Because Millennium's dead and Century's dead and he's got to tell something to their dad. But uh, that Maxie wanted me to mention that. Yeah. And I think it, it serves as like a neat contrast to mm. um, uh, Jay and Marion, who, you know, spend a lot of time uh, building up to what will hopefully be a healthy relationship. Hopefully. I mean... Jay has set the ground. I mean, I guess they had sex drunk, but like that wasn't great. But no, you know, they were both drunk, which I suppose is slightly better. Yeah, and I I guess if you have sex drunk and like in the morning you're like, well, I don't regret it, or I I don't feel that hard done by it. Although I suppose somebody who knows better about this subject than me, tell me, is it yeah. better? When both of you are drunk, because both of you are inebriated and like it's more difficult for either of you to exert an unfair amount of control, or is it just as bad as if yeah. one of you was sober? I mean, I guess, I guess me, I guess if it was, it got to the point where it was a bit too gross for for both me and Becca that um. Oh yeah, definitely. We just wreck on it and say, now nah, they just spooned all night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, you are playing a character. You're not having. Yeah. A, uh, a real relationship and mm. in most cases that's acknowledged but again role playing is basically like improv so yeah. if at any point like any other player does something that goes too far you can just talk about that if you explain why you're not okay with that then in most cases mm. there's probably something that can be worked out and that especially applies uh, when you are simulating relationships between characters because mm. in pretty much the same way that you are allowed to object to the way that a relationship is depicted in like a book or something. Yeah. It makes sense that if like both of you are working together to forge the narrative, then you can express like stuff that you are and are aren't okay with. Mm. Um This I, is a pretty weird way to say this thing, but you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. It's it's about respecting each other's boundaries as people. You know, like hey I've I've talked before on the podcast about how there are certain things that you like all of you at the table have to respect yeah people are very very likely to have boundaries about that are very quickly going to make the game not fun for them yeah so it doesn't it's not really too much of a stretch that that should come into what you're role playing as well mm. right yeah i mean you know i mean i definitely from all different i remember i um i think i've talked a little bit about the superhero game that i did that has unfortunately turned out to be a one shot because uh, we never managed to get back together as a group ever again, which is sad. But um, what system were you using? Um, it was. Uh, I'm fairly certain it was homebrew, actually. Um, oh, okay. My cousin cobbled it together from the Cortex system, which it's like this big, thick book, and it has like lots of different character traits, and you like pick them individually to like make your character. Oh. Anyway. Cool. Yeah, it's a bit like GURPS, but it's a bit simpler than GURPS. Anyway. 
Um, and you have all different kinds of characters in there, and at the back it has like, oh, here's what you need to do. Pick if you want to have a vampire, or if you want to have a this kind of character, or this kind of character. You know, if you wanted to just have some quick builds in the back, they've got them in the back as well. So it's, it's pretty interesting, because you take on traits rather than um, particular stats or whatever. So I think my character had a... Um, she had... A, one of her traits was that she was a bit... um. What's the word I'm looking for? She was a bit of a Casanova. I think the trait's called Casanova as well. So it's like you're constantly kind of a bit of a horn dog and you're always like hitting on people and you're a bit flay. I also think I had like hot headed and short tempered. It was a really fun character to play. Anyway, there was this other character and he too was a bit of a horn dog, but neither of us had like the trait where we'd both be instantly attracted to each other. And honestly, as a player, because I didn't know this other guy that well, I wasn't comfortable with kind of pottering a romantic relationship. So I remember at the end of the session, he was kind of going through, he was like, oh, could our characters have a relationship with the traits we've been given? And I went, honestly, dude, I don't think we'd work. I think our characters work really well as friends, but like, I basically had to friend zone this guy's character. I was like, yeah, look, our characters make great friends, and like, but I, I don't think my character would go for your character uh which is a realistic like outcome yeah it's not like even like two people who ostensibly in real life have the casanova trait will instantly be attracted to each other yeah you know it's and like maybe they even respect each other's life philosophies but they're not interested yeah. in a relationship with each other who knows yeah so obviously if you're uncomfortable with something as a player especially i mean with anything but I think especially when it comes to like romance between characters, you can just go, that's 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 just no this, okay, and that's mm. fine. Also, like, if you're going to try and set up a relationship between two characters, there needs to be a good amount of communication and agreement between the two players, mm. just like there needs to be for pretty much any interaction between two player characters. Yeah. So don't like in a group of like strangers you haven't really known for that long. And I'm kind of stepping outside my wheelhouse here because I've never really played a game where like it's been 100% strangers and I haven't been the DM. Mm. But if you are, don't be that guy Yeah. who makes it weird immediately. Yeah. Like, before the characters have even got to know each other, you might be like two or three sessions in. Don't do that. Yeah, don't be desperate. Come on. Yeah. Like, even if your character is... There will probably be opportunities for you to like display that aspect of the character more, yeah, and get it further like down on paper before you start like trying to attach yourself to other members of the party. It's like it's really gross, man, and it yeah, ruins the vibe for everybody almost immediately. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that gets borne out when two players who are very open to like working together on character development decide, hey. Both of our characters should, for the betterment of... Or, well, I say betterment, like, character development-wise betterment, which is not always to the benefit of the character in question. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they might be turning into a horrible person or a tragic hero or something. Yeah. But for the betterment of our two characters, they should be in a relationship for a while. Yeah. Like, I d I this is really something you have to use judgment for yourself on, because obviously I can tell you what where the two goalposts are, but if you can't really see, like what point on the gradient between them is appropriate for like trying to raise this kind of thing i feel you're gonna have to feel it out for yourself mm. there's also the other spectrum of this and i have been at the table in this situation and it's really awkward when two people who in rl are in a relationship and then they make their characters oh. in a relationship and it is so like oh god stop being cute right now uh, and your teeth are and like, it's like ro rotting you don't want to say that they can't do that, especially yeah. since obviously these two people do know each other and therefore yeah. are probably okay with like the idea of putting their characters in a relationship. But it's it's really difficult to tell mm. if your characters are in a relationship because you are in a relationship or just because like you think it would work. And it's like yeah, do it. it's less objectionable than like being the creeper at the table, but it's yeah. still like eh, you might. Make it weird for other yeah. people. Yeah, especially like, look, especially like, look, I'll be real right now. Especially if you've been like, oh man, we need a fourth, we need a fourth guy, and you know, Jess puts up her hand. It's like, it's okay, guys. I'll invite Craig round. These aren't people I know, by the way. And you're like, oh, Craig's such a fuckboy, though. Um, 
And then, you know, Craig I mean, comes I kind in. of feel that there's a major, like, communication issue right there before Craig yeah. even arrives. <laughs> before, before, yeah, before we even start. But sometimes it happens when you're like, like your I'm too much of a coward to tell Jess that I don't want Craig to come into my game. Yeah. It shouldn't happen, and you should try and make sure it doesn't happen, but sometimes it happens. Sometimes it does happen. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, Jess, we've told you multiple times this guy's a fuckboy. And Jess is like, he's not a fuckboy, he's my forever love. And you're just like, oh, for fuck's sake, Jess. Last week, Zach was your forever love. Oh, my God. Anyway. You know, you know I sometimes get the feeling, listeners, that Beth actually has a much more exciting life than all of us, that she's able to speak from experience about all of these things. <laughs> and anyway, and you know, last week you had Zach on the table, and he played this sexy bisexual elf girl in leather armor, whatever, and he made a total mockery of the thing, so you ended up killing his character off. And then apparently, a week later, Jess and Zach broke up. And it was a surprise to fucking absolutely no one. And then she brings Craig in. And Craig, he's not as bad as Zach was. And, like, you think he might be a bit better. But you would know, right? Craig's like, I'm going to start up my business. Are you absolutely sure these aren't real people? Because you're being, like, really, really bitter about this imaginary situation. (laughs) I promise you, these are not real people. No are they even like proxies the for real monologue. people? Has this actually happened to you? This has not actually happened to me. This is all made up. Anywhere. Has this happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been damaged by fuckboys? Coming to your D&D table. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere. So, and you're like, and Craig's like, yeah, I'm planning to start my own music business. And you're like, oh, fuck, man, we've heard you sing, Craig, because you sang. This isn't uh, even about D&D anymore. This is just you complaining about a specific kind of man you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I mean, <laughs> he sounds like a jerk off, but. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but you're like, you know, he's never going to get a job and he's never going to get this business started up. And even though he himself is a recipient of the welfare state, he constantly complains about single mothers who receive child tax benefits. And you're just like, Craig, shut the fuck up, man. Shut the fuck up. You've no idea what you're talking about. Anyway. And Craig makes this pretty typical, like, fight a dude character. And the character isn't all that bad. And you're like, okay, maybe Craig's not so bad. But then, like, him and Jess's, like, elf girl, they start making out. And you're like, oh, shit, Jess, why? Like, yeah, they're super in love and they're married. Jess, you've been... Jess, you never mentioned anything about a husband in your character sheet. Why are you changing your character? Just because you changed for him doesn't mean your character has to change for his character. Beth, literally nobody listening right now believes Jess and Craig aren't real. This has 100% happened to you. This is not 100% happened to me. This has it never totally happened has. to me. It totally has. It absolutely has. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did once have um, a group where the, the, their characters weren't together in the show, but they were together in real life. Not show, sorry, game. But their characters were, were together. Sorry, their characters weren't together. They were together in real life. And then I think a few months later, they broke up. So we could never do a session ever again because it was a particularly bitter breakup. Oh, and it was no. all like... <sighs> That's always awkward. Um, so if you are ever in a and d group with your boyfriend, girlfriend, or partner, um, make sure you break up amicably because you ruin the fun for everyone else. Honestly, I hate people who are in love. It sickens me. Um, <laughs> I much prefer fake made-up romances on tabletop role-playing games. That's the shit I like. Oh, by the way, if you're the DM, because now I'm going to complain about Jess and Craig or whoever the fuck, but, like, it's weird because I know I haven't personally seen this happen, but I really feel like I have. Yeah. If you're the DM and you have a DMPC, first of all, you have a DMPC. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, what Um, the fuck? Shit, yeah. And second of all, if you are in a real-life relationship with somebody at the table, like... Obviously, it's not weird that that happens because mm. you spend a lot of time with that person. Do not try and like make your DMPC have a relationship with that character. Please don't. Yeah, don't 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 that, turn that, this that, into your weird sex thing. Okay. It's like so. Imagine the thing. Imagine Jess and Craig, except mm. Jess is the DM. Oh, it is like shit. exponentially more awkward at that point because everybody has to pay attention to Jess because she is the DM. She. She controls the horizontal and the vertical. (laughs) 
and now quite literally and and now now like everybody has to watch as and, and, oh god as oh. as as um Bardo the warrior like skull fucks the elf girl yeah it's not and everybody's sitting there thinking like why am I even here I could have gone to Friday Night Magic or I could have like sat and watched Netflix or yeah, done a number of other seemingly useless things that would have been far more entertaining. Than yeah, and I'm just this. sitting here like, oh, God. What I'm saying is that, you know, if you have a DMPC and your significant other has a player character and you want to, like, try and, like, get them together long term over the uh, the course of the game, um, to quote a popular Shigeru Miyamoto parody account, please do not do that. <laughs> and... Like, I mean, I guess in your spare time, in private, you can do that with your partner. I don't think that's the kind of role play that you should be doing in private with your partner. <laughs> yeah, it's a very different kind of role play you're doing there. You know, it's... Well, maybe not that different. I don't know well, exactly I don't how know. any of you out there want to handle that. I mean, I... I mean, I guess if... Well, technically, then you're kind of going into LARPing, aren't you? I, suppose. I don't know. I mean, like... Ostensibly, both involve people carrying implements as a means of inflicting pain. Yeah. It's just, like, the pain is a bit more fatal in one case. In the the sexy time kiss or in the lap kiss? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I can't anyway into anything. I have no anyway idea where we're There's going no escape this. from this conversation, Alex. What has happened? So, anyway. Um, yeah. Very briefly, mm-hmm. there are also other kinds of relationship that characters can have. Sometimes you might want two player characters to spend a lot of time together, not because they uh, are in any kind of like sexual or romantic relationship, but just because they play off each other really well. Yeah. Like, for instance, um, Silas and Jay yeah. have a really good dynamic. Yeah, I I kind of want... I remember when we were in that crypt and, like, Jay and Silas were, like, instantly drawn to, like, skulls and were, like, let's make puppets. And everyone else was, like, do not make puppets with the dead people. And then Silas and Jay were, like, we're coming back later, right? And I was, like, yeah, we're coming back later. But, yeah, they, they do have a really good dynamic because they're both quite, um... Mm. I mean, Jay's, like, intentionally mischievous. I don't know if Silas is intentionally mischievous. I'm quite bad at reading Silas. Like, if I were asked to do a I feel like a Silas character is occasionally study of Silas. intentionally mischievous, but also, yeah. like, a lot of his mischief is based on the fact that he really does not understand the world he inhabits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, trying to do his best. Yeah, if I had to do a character study of, like, all of the characters that are on the table, I think Jay's would obviously be the best like character study essay because I play Jay, so I understand Jay the best, right? Yeah. But also, I think like Marion's would be all right, and I think Balthazar's would be all right. Silas's would make no fucking sense. I'd be like, I honestly don't know about this character, and this is really why we need to do the Silas special so Matt can explain Silas to me yeah, as a character. Yeah, just get Matt to explain all of Silas. Yeah. I so mean, it's like it's so not Matt, out of the window. So I have Matt, asked tell him about it before. Yeah. It's like like inside a inside the actor studio where we saw. So Matt, what the fuck, man? You know, we need that episode. Anyway. Honestly, the things he tells me privately as the DM just serve to make Silas more confusing as a character. (laughs) Yeah, come on, Matt! Matt, please! Save us! Like, I am so blessed to have Darius instead of Silas, because Darius makes complete sense to me as a character. I'm like, yes, this is the shit I can deal with. And then there's Silas, and it's like... I honestly want Darius and Silas to meet and interact with each other, but I... I mean... That would be difficult, given that, that would Matt would have to play both of them. Yeah. And they come from different universes. Yeah. Although, te- technically, in Two Earth, there is the capability to travel to parallel dimensions, but... Um, Dawn Summer also has that, so... Yeah. Like, maybe there would be, like, a weird crossover event at some point. <laughs> that might be kind of fun to do, Cri- but I don't know who would DM it. Crisis on infinite... Two Earths. Two Earths. Obviously. <laughs> And it, it ends with, like, um, Azriel, like, screaming to the sky, holding the dead body of someone. Azriel's not really a good fit for Superman. But you know what I mean. <laughs> Azriel's not a good fit for <laughs> Superman, really. Understatement of the century. Nah, I think, um, I don't really know. I don't really know quite enough about the, uh, 
yeah. the the other characters in your game to yeah. establish like maybe Therai as Superman. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Or possibly Balasar actually as Superman. Balasar would make a good Superman. I don't know who'd make a good Supergirl, Marion, I'm assuming, but I really want Marion to die. Does that make <laughs> J- Jimmy Olsen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You've gone full comics already and I can't follow. Full comic. Anyway. Um But um yeah, also, I kind of like the relationship between Silas and Balasar in that because Marion and Jay pair off so much, like, they just sort of get forced together and they have to deal. Yeah, I mean, that in a weird way, I always kind of think there's a tiny bit of a thing there, but it's, like, unspoken. No, see, Bal- I don't. Like, I think yeah. it's, it's more interesting and amusing if, like, there's nothing there and they're just, like, good friends because they keep constantly getting paired off. No, yeah, because... that, that as well. Obviously, they are good friends. Hmm. But, like... In my life as a fan, I like to pair everyone off into neat groups. Sometimes this means that one particular character is chosen to be paired with all the rest of them. Beth Um, confirmed for, like, American 1960s middle-class fundamentalist Christian. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, but, like, um... I'm like more into like polyamorous shipping and stuff like that. I was gonna, well, like you're you're absolutely none of those things. Yeah, you're just, not straight. You're not fundamentalist Christian. It isn't the 1960s, and you aren't American. Yeah, I just, I just like. You're not even middle class. I just like having couples. Even like, even if you have like two arrow ace characters, I'm like, well, they're obviously best friends. Then if they mm. can't be in relationships with anyone else. Then you know they're arrow ace buddies for life. Which I feel is probably cool. what Arrow I mean, Ace people go for anywhere. They like it probably Arrow Ace, sometimes like, works, yeah. We're friends. Yeah. So, real briefly though, I wanted to talk about um, Azrael and Eleanor. Yeah. Because just as easily as you can have um, two players, or a player in the DM, agree to have two characters hook up romantically, Yeah. you can also have two characters, two two players, or a player in the DM, agree to play out, like, one of those tired sitcom tropes about yeah. the chronically uninterested person being hit on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which are sometimes kind of gross, but I really yeah. like um, the, the Eleanor Azrael thing, where Azrael yeah. is, like... Like, like there's, there's repercussions in Azrael's life because he's, he's like, eh, this woman I really don't like very much wants to have sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where, like, what was it that happened last session? It was like, I think Captain Lillyhammer was trying to, like, imply in a conversation, like, I want you to do something illegal for me because I'm the chief of police and I can't do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> and Azrael was like, oh no, oh no. The last time I pretended to ignore things that people were implicitly saying in a conversation, the person in question wanted to have sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think, like, didn't Captain Lehammer's deputy went, oh, you met Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was amusing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just one of those things, like, El- Eleanor just strikes me as that kind of character who, she has her fingers in all the pies, um, but she especially that's, wants that's to... that's not the only thing that she has her fingers in, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, it's, it's you know, she... She's a, she like like Eleanor does like to ascertain a certain amount of control over people, um, which is, I mean, it's about as creepy as it actually is. You know, she's she thinks of herself as a chess master, sort of pulling events in the direction that she wants them to go into. Um, and if that particular event is a penis going into her vagina, well, you know, that's something that is a thing. <laughs> I don't think we can top that. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. We're done. <laughs> okay, if you've enjoyed this podcast, then we don't particularly want you to send us money. Uh, if you find a means to do that and you really want to do that, I guess I can't stop you. But what we really would like is for you to suggest us a topic. We are running out of topics in the tank. And mm. uh, as always, the very few that we keep putting off are the ones that would be incredibly difficult to pull off. They require, mm. like collations of notes that are difficult for us to do in a week or they require actually getting like physically getting somebody else onto the podcast as like a guest speaker so if there's anything that you guys want to hear about then 
we absolutely do want to talk about your topics, unless it's like something that we are just not comfortable discussing in general, mm. which could happen. Yeah. You but know. yeah. Um, so that was Hazard Bards. Yeah. Uh, I'm Alex. Uh, you can contact me on Twitter and Tumblr at uh, Cleaver Crumish. That, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I've not been posting this anywhere other than on YouTube. It's in the bloody description. <laughs> I'm not it's spelling true. my name out on, on the podcast again. I'm tired of that. Um, I've been Beth. You can find me on Tumblr and on Twitter at Baroness Banff. Um, if you have anything you've made to show us, or a suggestion suggestions like, you can you always post. use the hashtag house of bards that's all one word on twitter and that's all that's three words on tumblr um and you can always pop it in YouTube. Words, you know like make a judgment based on the uh tagging system of the social network that you use yeah um obviously if it's not one of those two we are unlikely to see it mm. but maybe maybe it'll happen yeah maybe if you shout you know. in the void long enough eventually all, entropy yeah. will bring your message to us and That's you how know, entropy works, right? You know, you can always just comment on the video. That's the video. honestly probably the best thoroughfare to us mm. oh. because I get emails from YouTube whenever you do that. Mm. Heck, you could even reblog it and add a comment on Tumblr. It's totally you could thing share you can do. it on Facebook because you I post it on Facebook. Yeah, you could do lots of things. Retweet it because occasionally I do post these on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, that's something that you can totally do. And we hope you've enjoyed this. We do hope you've enjoyed uh, House of Bards. Yeah. Because I keep forgetting to mention it, the uh, music that I use is by Kevin McLeod. Uh, we will see you again next week, and we hope you have enjoyed this uh, very special episode of House of Bards. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye! <laughs>